Good morning. So I'm working on a tutorial video on how to connect the ICOM 705 to a Raspberry Pi or other Linux distributions, but in answer to a viewer's question. Um, and I had a couple of other viewer questions that I thought I'd address in a quick tips video for you. One question was how I integrated the MXP50 amplifier with the 705. And the other question was, I have an LDG Z11 Pro tuner here. And uh, I, I mentioned how you can connect that. And I thought I'd show how you can connect that and how, uh, how it operates with the 705. So the MXP50 amplifier, fairly popular little uh, amplifier, marketed really to the FT817, which it works fine with out of the box, has a problem with keying. Uh, it doesn't really have a keying circuit. Uh, it just brings the, the relays, coils, out through the keying line and expects your radio to sync the 38 or so milliamps of current that the relays are going to draw which the FT817 can handle, um, some other radios apparently not. My uh, MCHF clone could not sync that much current, and the 705 cannot sync that much current, so the 705 could not key the amplifier. So the first thing you need to do if you have one of these and you want to use it with your 705 is you need to fix the keying, um, and I have a video on that. I'll put a link in the description down below. It's a very simple little circuit that you add to it, a single transistor and a single resistor, and that offloads the current, and uh, then the radio only has to deal with about one milliamp of, of current, basically a signal. It turns the signal line into a signal line instead of um, just bringing the relays out. So um, watch that video that I've linked down below. Do that modification to your amplifier. It's real simple. Once you're done with that, uh, connecting it to the 705 is very simple. Sorry for the camera shake there. This is a tip ring sleeve, uh, eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter connector, which is what the 705 uses on its most of its ports. Um, you'll need one of these. And then the wiring from the amplifier's keying line is very simple. The keying line goes to the tip and the ground wire goes to the sleeve. Nothing connects to the ring. So that's, um, that's it. And we plug that into the uh, amplifier uh, connector, which is the top one on the right side of the radio. And then watch over here, watch the transmit light. Now, oh, can you see it? Let me get that in the shot. There we go. And as you can see, the radio is now keying the amplifier just perfectly. KB9RLW. I'm on an unoccupied part of the 80 meter band and uh, or 75 meter band and uh, I'm down down on power but I figured I'd ID anyway. You should always ID when you throw a carrier out. So that's really all there is to hooking this little amplifier up uh, to work with the 705. Do that keying modification that I that I showed you and it'll work just fine. Um, okay now the Z11 Pro tuner and presumably some of the other um, LDG tuners, if they have the same connector on the back, they have a eighth inch or 3.5 mil jack on the back for their control line to the radio. And again, all you need is, uh, well, you just need a simple stereo patch cord, which is what I've got here, which is a, a tip ring sleeve, eighth inch or 3.5 mil connector. Um, it's just a patch cord like you'd use to plug a monitor into your computer's sound card output. Um, that's all you need. That plugs into the back of the tuner, and then the tuner output jack is the second jack down here on the right side of the radio, and we plug into that. Now I'm going to go into the function menu on panel uh, 2, and right there, right there is the tuner button. It's the same as the tuner button on the front of, your sev of a 7300, and right now it's grayed out. Uh, because there's nothing connected. As soon as I plug this in, you'll see it come active. There. Tuner off. It just it just came up. Tuner off. The LDG tuner uh, clicked and flickered. 
Hopefully you can see that over here. And now uh, to use the tuner, um, I can simply long press on this and it will initiate a tuning cycle. There we go, we're tuned. Uh, so it works very similar to the way the uh, tune, tuner button on the 7300 works. If I go back into function, tuner on, and we're, we're tuned, if I hit, tu hit just temporarily tap this, just a short tap, um, you'll see the lights on the tuner flicker as it goes into bypass mode. Now the tuner's in bypass mode. If I tap it again, now the tuner's engaged again. So you can tune it manually that way, but if you, oh, wait a minute, KB9RLW, always ID when you throw out a carrier. Uh, but if I shift frequency or shift band, let's uh, go ahead and change bands. We'll go to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, not too much activity on 17, so we should be safe there. Um, turn the amplifier off. Okay, so now I've switched bands, I need to tune. I could go in and I could press the tuner button again, but the other feature is if I just short press the mic, it'll initiate a tuning cycle because it knows that we've moved frequency far enough that it needs to tune. And there we did, it did, it did its tuning cycle. Now I'm tuned and I'm ready to go, KB9RLW. Uh, so the functions with the tuner is, is very seamless. It works quite well. There is, however, one gotcha, and this bugs me, and I, I don't know what the fix is. I think ICOM could fix it with software, but when I turn off the 705, that trigger line for my tuner is going to go low, and the tuner is going to interpret that as me pushing in and holding the tune button and not releasing it. And you'll see the lights on the tuner over here go in go into an, uh, a, a tune mode but never complete because that line won't be released so i'll turn off the radio oops long press powering off and there we are the lights just came on on the tuner it thinks i'm holding the tune button in um it's probably not going to hurt anything but it annoys me <laughs> and i end up unplugging my uh, control line and then you see it, it finishes its little cycle like, oh, I tried to tune, but there was no RF um, and goes dark. So that is one problem um, with this. And, and I don't know what the fix is. I've got an idea. See, as soon as I plug that in, the tuner initiates a tune cycle and just sits there. Is that in shot? Yeah, that's in shot. And just sits there as if I'm holding the tune button in. So that is one issue. And I think... I, I don't know if they can fix that. I think what's happening is that that tune line is going low on the radio when we power it off. Uh, and I don't know if they can fix that with software. I've got an idea for making a little single transistor circuit that goes in line with this that senses the, uh, the power um, voltage on the control line and only enables that tune line if there's power there. I might experiment with that. So that is a little issue. As soon as I turn the radio on, that line goes high, the tuner finishes its fake tuning cycle, and then things are back to normal. So it's real easy to hook it up. There's just that one little weird behavior that's more of an annoyance than a problem. So anyway, uh, there you go. I hope that that answers those questions, and I'm going to get back to work on my tutorial video for connecting this uh, little radio to Linux and the Raspberry Pi. We'll see you in that one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.